Hello and welcome to The Best of the Worst, featuring Darian Tang, Cameron Christian and Taylor Osborne. Tee The award winner for the most persistent goes to Napoleon, because he has escaped Elba and came back to ruin everything because he wanted to restart the Empire. Also because he had good war tactics and kept his enemies in line. Napoleon's positive contributions consist of the Treaty of Amiens with Britain's increased money and popularity. He abolished serfdom in the empire once he got control and he sparked nationalism in enemy countries. The legacy that Napoleon leaves behind is that he characterized France as a powerful enemy and strengthened the bond between the coalition allies. Next up is the award for the most resilient public enemy that goes to Rasputin. Aww. The reason Rasputin earns this title is because everyone hated him, he stayed in power next to Alexandra for a while, and he wouldn't die after multiple poisonings and bullets. The positive contributions that Rasputin left behind is that he rebuffed a public protest of incompetent czars and caused more demand for autonomy. The legacy he left behind was caused by the Bolshevik Revolution and changed Russian government forever. Next up is the most successful socialist movement, which goes to the Bolshevik Revolution. The Bolshevik Revolution based thinking on Communist Manifesto and new revolutionary thought. They had also had well-developed parties, even when in minority. Their positive contributions was when they went in for the kill at the right moment in Switzerland. They had excellent tactics and popular support from the appeal to the masses. The legacy they leave behind was the start of the Soviet Union and communist ideology. They would have played a huge role in foreign affairs later on. The next award of the most enlightened absolutist goes to Catherine the Great. She determined to westernize Russian thought and bring in sophistication and culture. She loved philosophes, for example Voltaire, and reformed from above. Positive contributions by Catherine the Great was that she published the encyclopedia and gave Diderot money. She had lots of respect outside of Russia and a big land expansion. The legacy she leaves behind was that she became one of the most famous rulers ever. The next award for the most influential art goes to Romanticism, which held a revolt against classical and enlightened art in the name of artistic freedom, believed in emotion, imag imagination, and spontaneous thought. They rejected materialism and loved natural themes. Their positive effects consisted of lots of new authors, artists, and musicians. They reinforced nationalism by inspiring people to look inward. The legacy that was left behind was that during this era, they created masterpieces of art still loved today, and lots of people still admire and use them. The award for the most impactful urban development goes to the germ theory. Pastor pro disproved miasmatic theory, which states that filth equals disease, with fermenting bacteria and microscopes. The effects were how they revolutionized medicine and hospitals, new studies on bacteria and new vaccines, and it led to Lister's antiseptic principle. The legacy that this left behind includes the pasteurization still in use today, breakthroughs that led to conquest of disease and overall better health and living. The award for the most influential scientific discovery goes to the scientific revolution. It includes cop car cop cop bloody hell. It includes Copernicus's heliocentric universe, Brahe and Kepler's new planetary laws, Galileo's openly defying of the Pope and his new experiment exp ah, bloody hell. Newton combined it all in his Principia and made the law of universal gravitation. The influences of this made the ability to convince ordinary people of new law is soon accepted by most. Tough luck with the church though. 
What? <laughs> this led to the change of the entire view of the universe and the foundation of modern science. Sign science! Ah! Next up, Frederick William the First gets the award for the most militaristic ruler. He had a strange love for tall soldiers and sent guys into towns to collect them. He believed that state welfare for mostly depended on military. His influences include his building of army with few resources, and it was the best in Europe at the time. It made an honest <laughs> and respected <laughs> Darian, shut up! It made an honest and respected bureaucracy. In the end, he established a Prussian absolutism and made it the most militaristic country of modern times. It also set the stage for Bismarck later on. Now the award for the best nationalist as well as the best moustache goes to Bismarck. He united Germany after centuries of disorder. He was highly strategic with enemy conquest and got loads of land and an amazing moustache. He was sexy as hell. His influences included a new consti constitution being introduced into popular involvement. What? Constitution introduced the concept of popular involvement. Okay. It got lots of support. In the end, it created a solid country that would be big in next centuries. It became the most powerful state of the time and created huge national pride. Now for the last positive award. The most beneficial women's movement award goes through the 1970s feminism. Ah. <laughs> it created for a new critique of gender roles, allowed more women in jobs, and slightly made equal pay and no it didn't actually, but like they wanted it. And more and rights are for as well, that's yeah. Its influence uh, created a capture of the people's attention and left the legacy of the formulation of NOW, N-O-W, which is still here. And the low demand answered over time, inspired LGBT and disabled movements to have redefined liberty, yeah. All right. The award for worst battle tactic goes to the Russian invasion. It was attempted many times and subsequently failed many times thanks to the efforts of Napoleon and Hitler. It cost far too much time, resources and lives, and Ford's legacy let the world know of just how dangerous Russia could be, increased the fear that the enemies had of Russia, and also Napoleon's retreat, in specific, was one of the, known as one of history's biggest military failures. Way to go. The award for most villainous, and also most oppressed, goes to none other than Adolf Hitler. He exterminated millions out of racist nationalism and later killed himself out of lost hope. He had enemies around the globe and his allies of the Axis were also well, quite villainous. He slaughtered and tortured millions of Jews, gypsies and others in wildly inhumane camps and helped cause the most costly war in human history. All because of a little quarrel with Czechoslovakia. His legacy led him to be known today as one of the most evil people ever and caused an inevitable war thanks to the nature of Nazism. The award for worst political reform goes to the reign of terror imposed by Robespierre and his committee of public safety. They essentially executed all who were suspected of threat to the revolution and later killed off their own members of the committee. They caused a lot of unnecessary bloodshed and huge unpopularity for the committee and led to lazy na national convention because the civilians were too rowdy and there was only so much they could do and therefore the economy became much less stable. It also resulted in the formation of the Directory, which eventually failed because of Napoleon. The Reign of Terror was also known later on in its legacy as one of the most controversial phases of revolution and helped give the French Revolution its bloody, violent reputation. Last and definitely least, the award for most unpopular monarchs goes to Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette. They were the enemies for the French Revolution, who were overthrown and beheaded. They were untrusted and despised by peasants, who were overlooked in the Third Estate. The King and Queen soon declared bankruptcy and ran away in the people's time of need. It caused lots of popular unhappiness and struggle. 
and led the people to have violent nationalistic identities, and they eventually triggered the bloody Second Revolution. They are still thought of today as lazy and oblivious monarchs, and they indirectly caused the turning point of France's history.